Hello guys. Today's video is about the stylized option, which is a sub menu within the effect menu that contains various effects you can apply to selected objects or text to enhance their appearance. So let's learn how to use it. Let's first add a few shapes for me to apply the different options of the stylized menu. All right, we can start with these now. To access the stylized menu, you can either go to Effect and then Stylize and you can find the different offerings of this menu. Or you can even access the stylized menu through this FX button sitting at the bottom of the appearance panel. So we're going to have the shape selected and let's pick the first option here, which is Drop Shadow. Please be aware that all these effects can be applied to text as well, so they're not restricted to just shapes. Once you get the pop-up menu, you'll find the different options to fine-tune the drop shadow. We can pick the blending mode from a wide variety as per our requirement. But in short, to experiment with the different modes here, so I am going to stick to multiply. Moving on to Opacity. Here you can update the opacity of the drop shadow with 75% being the default setting. So I'm going to stick to that. X offset reflects the horizontal move of the shadow. And right now Y offset is set to zero, which is why you don't see any vertical shadow. Let's add some vertical shadow. And you can see it reflecting another object instantly, since the preview option is checked. We can even use the minus figure here. So let's say we want the vertical shadow to appear on top of the object instead of bottom. So I'm going to update the setting to, let's say, minus 4. And you'll find the shadow pushing itself to the top of the object. And the same is true for X offset as well. So if we want the shadow to reveal itself from the left side of the object, let's just change the setting to minus four and see the arc revealing itself from the left instead of right. Blur adjusts the blur settings of the shadow. So if we don't want the shadow to be so pronounced, we can increase the value to suit our need. But I personally don't like it so blurred, so I'm gonna to stick to two points. We can even change the color of the shadow to something else. So let's click the color once to reveal the color palette and pick a color and hit OK. And you shall find it updating the shadow. Since I'm happier with the black shadow, I'm going to stick to that. Lastly, we have the darkness option, which basically works on the opacity of your chosen color. So right now it is set to 100%, which is why you can see the black of the shadow pretty pronounced. The moment we change it to 50%, you can find how it affects the depth of the color. Let's change it back to the default setting and come out of this option. Let's move on to the next setting. And for that, let's select a different object here. Now let's go to Stylize and then feather. Feathering is pretty straightforward, which is why you just have one setting to work with here. And that's the radius. Basically, feathering softens the edges of an object, creating a feathered or blurred effect. So when we increase the feathering value, it softens the edge of our object even further. You can even apply two different effects to a particular object. So this circle already has the feather applied to it, but we can always go back to stylize option and layer a drop shadow to it. We can always further amend the settings of the drop shadow if we wanted to. So there is no restriction of sticking to just one effect. 
Let's move on to the next effect. And we select the new object for that. And then go to Stylize. And choose Inner Glow. It's self-explanatory and looks similar to Feather in a way. But it has a few other options similar to the Drop Shadow effect and they all work exactly the same way. So we can experiment with the different modes here. We can increase the blur size, and for this one, we even have the option of applying these settings to the center of the object instead of the edge. We can even change the color of the glow to something else. And do remember that all these effects can be applied to text as well. For the next one, let's just copy this circle here. And let's remove the existing effect from this circle by hitting the trash button sitting next to the applied effect in the appearance panel. Now let's go to stylize and then outer glow. Outer glow works exactly like inner glow, except that it does not have the option to apply it to the edge or center. With Outer Glow, you'll find that the effect adds a glowing effect around the outer edges of our object. We're free to update the blending mode of the effect. The opacity or blur settings like we did with Inner Glow. And lastly, the color of the glow. If we remove the stroke from our object, it makes the object look even better. So let's just do that. Perfect. For the next one, let's just add a rectangle to our screen. Now this one is not used much because we rather use this option with the help of the corner widgets than through the stylized option. But let's learn it anyway. Let's go to Stylize, and then Round Corners. You'll find that the pop-up menu only has one option, and when we increase the value, the corners take shape. But like I mentioned earlier, this effect is used more through the Round Corner Widgets option, and we can use it even here on this object using the widgets. The last effect in Stylize is the Scribble option. This option applies a scribble effect to the selected object, giving it a hand-drawn look. So let's select our rectangle and go to Stylize and then Scribble. And you shall find a wide range of settings. We can change the angle of the stroke to our need. We can even use the Path Overlap option that can overlap the stroke to make it more or less pronounced, depending on the point size. The Variation option will widen the scribbling stroke, again, depending on the point size. So do experiment with the stroke width, the curviness, and spacing option, which will produce different results based on the size of the stroke of the chosen object. Actually, let's pick the Type tool and type in some text. Let's remove this rectangle for some space and increase the size of our text. Now let's go to Stylize and then Scribble and then play with the settings. I think we need to increase the font size for a better look. Also, let's change our font to something thicker. Now, let's get back to the scribble option and make some changes here. Wow. I think lowering the spacing really did the trick but do experiment using different fonts and playing with the settings to maximize that creative side of yours. So guys, that's all about the stylized options. In the next video, we're going to explore a very interesting feature of Illustrator called the Gradient Mesh. 
This feature allows you to create complex gradients and solid transitions within the shape of an object. So we're going to create a photorealistic image in the next one. So ensure to be there. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and please share the video and subscribe to my channel. And I shall be with you soon. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.